The following KQED production was produced in high definition. With the world's ever-growing thirst for energy, the search is on for a clean, safe, and inexhaustible power source. Today, in the quest for a solution, scientists, physicists, and engineers in Livermore, California, are shooting for the stars. When we look up at our sun, it is pouring out energy all the time that is keeping us warm and providing for the comfort of life on Earth by fusion of hydrogen atoms deep inside the sun. We'd like to do that on Earth, in this laboratory, in this target chamber right behind us. At Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the world's largest and most powerful laser is taking shape. Welcome to the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, a laser complex the size of a football stadium, funded with over $3 billion from the Department of Energy. Engineers are shooting to complete it by 2010. Their goal? To trigger a controlled nuclear fusion reaction. We turn the mass into energy, just like Einstein told us we would, equals mc squared, and we get a huge burst of energy out. And we get it out in a few trillions of a second. We capture that energy, we can make fusion energy to drive our future, to drive our planet without carbon, you know, without a nuclear waste. It's, it's just a wonderful source of energy. The idea of atomic fusion is not new, but currently the only way to extract practical power and make electricity from nuclear reactions is to use fission or splitting atoms. Unfortunately, the fuel for this reaction becomes nuclear waste. But if scientists can come up with a way of fusing hydrogen atoms, they may be able to harness a different type of nuclear power. Fusion is actually remarkably similar to fission. In both cases, it's the interplay between the electric repulsion and the nuclear force that holds things together. In the case of fission, we took advantage of the fact that if we broke the nuclear strong force just a little bit, the pieces would fly apart and we'd get all of that electric energy coming out. In fusion, we're doing the opposite. What we're trying to do is take advantage of the strong nuclear force. So you have uh, two particles. These normally repel each other. If we get them going fast, fast enough, they get closer because they have this kinetic energy. If you get them fast enough, they will actually touch. To do that, we have to heat them up. Heat basically means high velocity particles. Now when they touch, energy is released and typically one of those extra neutrons goes flying off with, with a huge amount of energy. That requires an incredibly hot, high pressure environment. The temperature that we have to reach is actually far hotter than the surface of the sun comparable to the core of the sun, the heart of the sun, the part where the energy of the sun is coming from, the part that we actually never see because it's covered by this much cooler outside of the sun that does all the glowing and provides our energy on Earth. But how do you create those conditions safely on Earth? That's what the NIF laser is all about. We consider this a grand challenge of humankind. People had been thinking, how could you do fusion? How could you do fusion? I mean, they were missing one little thing, and that's lasers. Simply put, lasers are devices that concentrate light into intense, narrow beams. The word laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The light in a laser comes from the stimulation of atoms. All atoms contain electrons. When these electrons are excited, they release energy by giving off particles of light called photons. In a laser, these photons are organized and excited at the same time, releasing or radiating a lot of power. What is the most important attribute, or one of the most important attributes of laser light? All the laser beams, all the photons are in lockstep going in one direction. So when they come to the lens, they all act identically and focus exactly to the smallest spot possible. A laser accomplishes this by forcing the photons to bounce around inside a mirrored chamber until they are organized and reflected out through a carefully aligned exit mirror. From there, it can be focused even further. 
Being able to direct and focus that much power could be the key to finally unlocking fusion. But to do that, scientists need an absolutely colossal laser, hitting a very tiny spot. If you look at the target we're shooting at, it's about the size of a BB. And it's filled up with not anything dangerous, just hydrogen. And if you can make hydrogen, bring hydrogen to the temperature of the inside of the sun, believe it or not, over 100 million degrees, and pressures that are like the inside of the sun, pressures of, of uh, over 100 billion times what we feel on our bodies right now because of the atmosphere, we can fuse them together. Here's how the NIF laser works. Electrical energy is fired into flash lamps to energize NIF amplifiers. A single triggering beam is then split into 48 separate laser beams that each make four passes through the amplifiers. They're then split again, making a total of 192 individual beams. All these are amplified further and their energy increases exponentially. The physical scale of the beam is changing for, from very small to around a foot on a side. And also the energy is increasing as we go. But it, the energy is increasing actually an incredible amount. In fact, if you think about it, it's a thousand million million times from the time we start to the time we get to the target chamber. Start to finish, this journey only takes a millionth of a second. The pulse begins with a small amount of energy, just one billionth of a joule. But at the finish, the target will be hit by 1.8 million joules of ultraviolet energy. To put that in perspective, in that one instant, the target will be zapped by 1,000 times the electrical generating power of every power plant in the United States. It's the difference between uh, clapping your hands and a major earthquake. That's how much more energy that you have. The target will be bombarded with about 500 trillion watts. The blast should produce enough energy to compress this small capsule of frozen hydrogen to temperatures of millions of degrees. Scientists believe this will cause ignition or fusion of the hydrogen atoms. And for a brief shining moment, a miniature star will be born. In addition to taking grand steps toward fusion power, the National Ignition Facility has other functions, and one is to help us better understand the universe. If you're an astrophysicist or an astronomer, you go to your big telescope and you stare out into space, these beautiful instruments, and you take a picture of something that happened thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, maybe billions of years ago, and you try to infer what happened. What if I said to you, why don't you come over here and we'll set up a little supernova for you. Now we have a way to do, for the first time, astrophysics in the laboratory. So this is going to open up the cosmos to experimental science and it'll happen right here. But the project is not without controversy. The NIF laser will be used to simulate nuclear explosions, enabling the military to study America's nuclear weapons stockpiles without having to explode an actual weapon. Some critics view this as a loophole around the nuclear test ban. In addition, the $3.5 billion project is over budget and behind schedule. And some skeptics in the scientific community have voiced doubts about its value and even its overall viability. You know, the question is, will this work? We have this beautiful laser, we have this beautiful target chamber, we have all this technology. We admit and have always said it's, it's a grand challenge. Now there's another question, could you ever use it for energy? You know, it's one thing if you could do it once, you know, but can you do it 10 times a second? That's a, another question altogether. And that's where I think people sometimes are skeptical about the future of fusion energy. Um, my point of view is, if you think of where we were 30 years ago, where lasers were just getting going, you know, my view of the future in the, is that it's just, it's just boundless. The future of fusion power is not clear. It could be another 50 years before we have a working fusion reactor, if ever. But supporters feel that fusion is still the best way to fuel the world's relentlessly growing thirst for energy. They say the only way to find out whether it's real or a false hope is to continue experiments until we know for sure.